When we talk about the big one, everyone's eyes turn to Manila. But what if I told you that a different, equally powerful threat is lurking right under the feet of millions in the Visayas? It's called the Negros Trench, and if it ruptures, it won't just shake one city. It could trigger a simultaneous mega-disaster across Cebu, Bohol, and Negros. Imagine the ground shaking violently in Cebu City at the exact same moment that landslides are burying villages in Negros and historic churches are crumbling in Bohol. This isn't a scene from a movie. It's a very real possibility that we need to talk about right now. Forget Manila for a moment. This is about the heart of the Philippines. Are the Visayas truly ready for a magnitude 7 or even stronger earthquake? Let's break down what this hidden danger really means for you and your family. Stay with me, because what you learn in the next few minutes could genuinely save lives. So, what exactly is the Negros Trench, and why haven't most of us heard more about it? Unlike the more famous Manila Trench far offshore, the Negros Trench is a subduction zone, a massive fault system that runs right between the islands of Negros and Cebu. Think of it as a geological seam stretching under the Visayan Sea, with its influence reaching all the way to Bohol and even up towards Masbate. The critical difference here is proximity. While the Manila and Cotabato trench segments are further out at sea, the Negros Trench is dangerously close to some of the most densely populated areas in the country outside of the capital. This isn't a distant threat. It's a next-door neighbor. When a fault is this close to land, the energy from an earthquake doesn't have far to travel. That means the shaking on the ground is far more intense, more violent, and more destructive. We're not just talking about a little rattle. We're talking about a catastrophic event centered right in the heart of the Visayas. This proximity changes everything. An earthquake from the Negros Trench isn't just about the ground shaking. A near-land rupture means the shaking will be incredibly intense, leading to three primary dangers that happen almost instantly. First, structural collapse. Buildings that weren't built to modern codes, especially older concrete structures and those with soft stories, like open ground floors for parking, are extremely vulnerable. Second, landslides. The mountainous interiors of Negros and the rolling hills of Cebu and Bohol are highly susceptible. The violent shaking can liquefy soil on slopes, triggering massive slides that can bury entire communities in seconds. And third, liquefaction. This is where solid ground temporarily behaves like a liquid. It can cause buildings to sink or tilt and underground pipes and cables to rupture. While a tsunami is a possible risk, especially for coastal areas, the immediate and most widespread dangers from a Negros trench quake are collapsing buildings and catastrophic landslides. It's a multi-island threat happening all at once. We don't have to guess what this would look like. We have a painful preview from recent history. On February 6, 2012, a magnitude 6.7 earthquake struck off the coast of Negros Oriental. It was a powerful quake, but not even close to the worst-case scenario. Still, the impact was devastating. The official toll was 51 people killed, but over a hundred were missing, presumed buried in landslides. Entire villages were wiped off the map. Buildings failed, roads were split in half, and bridges collapsed, cutting off vital lifelines. That earthquake happened at 11.49 a.m. on a Monday. Many people were awake, outdoors, and able to react. Now imagine a stronger quake, a magnitude 7.5 striking at 2 a.m. Imagine that happening not just in one part of Negros, but with severe shaking felt across Cebu and Bohol simultaneously. The 2012 quake was a tragic wake-up call. The next one could be a catastrophe on a scale the region has never seen. So, what is a realistic big one for the Visayas? Seismologists believe a magnitude 7.0 to 7.5 earthquake from the Negros Trench is plausible. A quake of that magnitude wouldn't just be stronger than the 2012 event. It would also last much longer. Instead of 15 seconds of shaking, 
we could be looking at 30 to 60 seconds of continuous, violent ground motion. One full minute. In an earthquake, a minute is an eternity. It's long enough for poorly constructed buildings to completely pancake. It's long enough to trigger widespread landslides across entire mountain ranges. The impact zones would be simultaneous and devastating. In Cebu City, the focus would be on mid-rise and older buildings in the dense city core. In Bohol, we'd see a repeat of the 2013 earthquake's devastation, with major risks to heritage structures and an even greater threat of slope failures. And across Negros, from Bacolod to Dumaguete, coastal cities and mountainous interiors would both be hit incredibly hard. This is the scenario we must prepare for, a single event causing cascading failures across multiple major islands. Let's get specific and look at the risks city by city. In Cebu City, the biggest concerns are the densely packed urban cores and the thousands of older buildings. Many structures have soft stories, open ground floors for parking or commercial space, which are notoriously weak during an earthquake. The city's bridges are also critical choke points. If they are damaged, the entire metro area could be paralyzed, making rescue and relief efforts a nightmare. In Bacolod and Dumaguete over on Negros Island, the fragility of infrastructure is a key concern. How would hospitals, already at capacity, handle a surge of thousands of casualties? How resilient are the power grids and water systems? A quake could knock them out for weeks. And like Cebu, Older masonry buildings in their downtown areas pose a significant collapse risk. Then there's Bohol. The island is still healing from the magnitude 7.2 quake in 2013. We know exactly where the vulnerabilities are. The same landslide corridors, the beloved but fragile heritage churches, and the liquefaction-prone coastal areas. Finally, even the fringe areas like Masbate, and parts of Leyte would experience prolonged shaking, potentially causing secondary damage to already weakened structures. Every island has its own unique set of vulnerabilities. Talking about this can be scary, but being prepared is the best way to conquer that fear. So what does being prepared actually mean for you in your home? It starts with simple things. Secure heavy furniture like cabinets and bookshelves to the walls using straps. Know where your main gas valve is and consider installing an automatic shutoff device. In older homes, check if your roof is properly tied to the walls. And a crucial tip, avoid sleeping in rooms located directly above soft story garages. At work or school, the mantra is drop, cover, and hold on. Practice this drill every few months. Don't just have one evacuation route, know at least two. Identify the safest spots inside your building, usually under sturdy tables or against interior walls, away from windows. For your family, the goal is self-sufficiency for 72 hours. Prepare a go bag with essentials, at least three to four liters of water per person per day, non-perishable food, a first aid kit, copies of important documents and IDs, and any necessary medications. And critically, agree on a family meeting point, a specific open space away from buildings in case phone lines are down and you get separated. Preparation extends beyond our homes to our communities. At the barangay level, proactive steps can make a huge difference. Local leaders should work to map known landslide-prone areas and clearly mark open, safe evacuation zones for residents. Pre-staging basic tools like shovels, crowbars, and ropes in a secure location can empower citizens to begin immediate localized rescue efforts while waiting for official responders. Setting up a simple radio communication network among barangay officials is also vital for coordinating information when cell service inevitably fails. We also need to think about our specific location. If you live inland, your priorities after the shaking stops are to check for fire hazards from gas leaks or electrical shorts and to ensure your home is structurally sound before re-entering. If you're on the coast, the threat is different. 
While a major tsunami is considered less likely from the Negros Trench compared to the Manila Trench, it is not impossible. The rule is simple and absolute. If you are at the beach or near a river mouth and you experience shaking that is so strong you can't stand up or that lasts for 20 seconds or longer, don't wait for a warning. As soon as the shaking stops, move to higher ground immediately. Beyond what we can do as individuals and communities, there are critical moves that need to happen at the level of infrastructure and policy. This is about building long-term resilience. The absolute priority should be retrofitting our most critical public buildings, schools, hospitals, and key bridges. These are the places we shelter in, the facilities that save lives, and the arteries that carry aid. We cannot afford for them to fail. For new construction, especially mid-rise buildings popping up all over our cities, we need strict enforcement of the National Building Code with zero tolerance for shortcuts. We also need to empower homeowners. Government could support micro-loan programs to help families afford simple but effective home retrofits, like strengthening walls or securing foundations. And for priceless heritage sites like the old churches in Bohol, we need to invest in stabilizing them with modern engineering techniques that preserve their historical character while protecting them from future quakes. This isn't just about spending money. It's about investing in our survival and our culture. The threat from the Negro's Trench is real. It's significant, and it affects millions of us in the Visayas. But being informed is the first step toward being prepared. Fear doesn't save lives, but action does. Let's start a conversation right here. Comment below with your city. Cebu, Bacolod, Dumaguete, Tagbilaran, or wherever you are in the Visayas. We'll try to share more tailored tips and resources for your specific area in future content. The most important thing you can do right now is to share this video with just one friend or family member who lives in the Visayas. Let's make sure everyone we care about has this information. Para sa Pilipinas, let's be an informed, ready, and resilient nation. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next video.